All right. Who's excited to talk about more billing? Yeah. Woo! So, uh, Darren, when I was going through my presentation with him, uh, he said, this isn't exciting enough. You got to start uh, with a joke uh, or a story or something. And I said, the joke is trying to get people excited about billing uh, at the end of day two at KazooCon. But I'm going to do my best, and I'm going to start with a real joke. Uh, my personal mentor in life, uh, Ron Swanson, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. But if you don't teach him how to fish and you just feed yourself, uh, that's fine, because he's a grown man and fishing isn't that hard. Uh, and, you know, if we're just talking about trout fishing, I agree, but actually, you know, fishing in general, if you're doing it for your livelihood, uh, and if you're doing it by hand, uh, the way a lot of you guys are still doing your billing systems, uh, or a lot of our customers are still doing our billing system, it's hard work. Uh, you spend all day uh, getting that done. Um, but it's important because uh, you want to get compensated at the end of the day. Uh, you want to pick that money up off the table that you earned from your customer. Uh, so that's a very important concept. Uh, you know, I could tell another story about a guy who spends all day fishing, takes his stuff to the market, and just gives it away. Uh, but that's not a very long story, because after a couple days, he's broke and he stops doing it. So uh, this is the story that we want to tell. And the end of this story uh, is you guys retiring to a beach because you've made so much money in VoIP. Uh, and that's a movie that everybody likes. So uh, here's the billing topics we're going to cover today. We're not going to cover everything. Uh, James Imanetti actually got through a couple of things. Uh, Johnny Five, the limiting and rating. Uh, we're going to talk about four ways to get your billing data here today, uh, and then you know which way you use, uh, depending whether you're a SaaS hosted client or if you're running your own infrastructure. Uh, we're also, because uh, Job asked so nicely about it, I'll briefly at the end just cover service plans uh, and MODB, uh, but very briefly. Uh, so first, a couple of bill basic billing concepts. Uh, and again, James already covered some of this, but my slides are prettier. So uh, billing is a catch-all word for a wide variety of technical accounting and billing functions. Uh, so the technical, you have stuff on the back end of Kazoo. Uh, device counting, user counting, uh, you have service docs and MODB, and I'll get into that at the end. Uh, and then you have uh, things like you know, uh, credit storage, access control, access to apps, access to functionality. Uh, you also have the accounting, uh, and then that's where you get, and, you, know, you, the, you guys know what that is. And then billing, which is your invoicing, ordering, it deals with refunds, it deals with the customer uh, side of the transaction, your customer. Uh, so just a quick review, what, what does Kazoo handle? Uh, just so the borderline is very clear, uh, we, ha we handle functional limits and credits in the system. And again, you saw some of that with uh, James, and the service docs handle the rest of that. Uh, we also let you do rating, so you can uh, designate what things cost in the system. But that's not the same thing as now presenting a bill to your customer. You still have to add all that stuff up uh, in your billing system. And then uh, you can do CDRs, counting of items, and we present the data to your billing system. Uh, the things we're going to talk about today, again, are these three at the bottom. Uh, the things that Kazoo doesn't handle, also very important because you still are liable for doing these things. So invoicing, refunds, uh, customer service, billing history, that's still uh, something that's important for you guys to be able to take care of if you're going to run a VoIP business. We also don't do least cost routing. Uh, we have rating and we have routing. We just don't have least cost routing and we're not an LCR engine. Uh, finally, we don't do the, we're not your accountant. If your taxes are wrong at the end of the year, uh, it's not our fault. Uh, blame your accountant. So uh, let's talk about the first thing we're going to talk about getting your billing data for is the SaaS hosted clients. Uh, there's two good methods for that. Uh, one is fairly new, but the problem we're solving here, uh, basically, as a reseller, you typically want to rebill your products from your vendors. You want to present one bill to the customer. It's a monthly bill. And basically, the way we help you is we just provide the tools to get the raw data, and you can take those costs and build them as you wish. So I'm going to show you what that looks like now. Uh, our first method is the reseller reporting method. Uh, that's a brand new tool in the system, and I'm going to flip over to that. I'm 
to hide my password from you. Okay. So when we're on our uh, master cluster right now, I'm going to go into the QA account. Now, if you're one of our hosted resellers, we're already getting this app out to you. If you don't have access to it, just ask us. Uh, but we're going to go in the reseller. It's called reseller accounting, not reseller reporting. Um, actually, we're going to go back. Did I go in the right account? Yeah, I'm in the QA account. So there's, these are not real accounts, um, as you can tell from some of the names. And I can just run a report and have it delivered to my email really easily. Uh, that's pretty much the functionality. Once you get the report, uh, it's just going to look like this. Uh, it's going to have a count of all your items up there uh, that are billable items. Uh, and again, these are all concepts on our hosted system. So these are when you're using our hosted providers. So this is a little more automated. Uh, it's also not available uh, on the dedicated installs at this time. Uh, the other thing it gives you is a CDR report so you can get your CDRs out. That should be pretty much everything you need uh, for a billing system like FreshBooks. Uh, again, this is ideal uh, for resellers who are up to 100 customers on our hosted system. Uh, it gets you, lets you get to that single bill, bill experience really quickly. You can just hand it off to your admin. Uh, but there's not really any automation for it, and it doesn't scale well. Uh, you could probably write a script to grab CSVs, but uh, we actually have a better way if you want to go automated. Um, is we have number two, which is the CDR API. Uh, that's something very easy to, you can just Google it, uh, and there's some instructions on our, on our old wiki. Uh, we'll be moving that stuff over to the new wiki soon. Um, but basically, this is once you're a SaaS customer who wants to automate. That cap is still around 100 accounts because uh, it is expensive on a large deployment. Basically, every time you run the CDR API, it's going to walk the accounts, and that's the expensive thing in Kazoo. So it's just fine for monthly. You do not want to try to use this for real time. Uh, but again, if you're a hosted reseller on our platform and you want to automate a bit, uh, just go into our CDR and you'll get rich call information. Uh, it's an approved uh, 2600 hertz approved method uh, and it works. Uh, the way it works, uh, you set up your API key, uh, there's a curl command, and then you get a payload. Uh, and you can have that payload come as a CSV if you want. Uh, and then you just feed it, and then that's where you start feeding those CDRs into your system. Um, so I'm going to show that, but I'm actually, I'm not a developer. I'm just a dumb business guy. Uh, actually, I do product at 2600 hertz. That's what I do. Uh, but I come from the business side, so I like the easy business way of doing things. Uh, and we're in the sandbox now. Let me blow that up a bit. So I'm going to show you business guys how to go see the CDRs yourself. And an opportunity to show off Smart PBX a little more. But you can go in here, and you can see your call logs. And oh, gosh, that looks bad. There. You can see your call logs right here. And if you click Call Details, you can actually see that full CDR right there. And so if you're wondering what's included in a CDR, uh, James again explained some of that, uh, but you can just come see it here in Smart PBX very easily. So that's number two. And the process for that, uh, you got to generate an API key first. Uh, there's instructions how to do that online. Uh, then you set up your script to pull, pull monthly to your billing system. And you can use that same API access if you want to do things like counting devices and users on the system. Fairly straightforward. OK, so that's the hosted resellers. And if you are a hosted reseller and you want to uh, not be at this conference anymore, you're done. So congratulations. Uh, for the rest of you deploying on your own infrastructure, uh, I've got another method for you guys right now. Uh, so the thing we're solving here 
you've, you're a service provider, you've got your own billing platform and you're looking to integrate the billing data and you're looking to do it as it occurs. Uh, the best platforms now, they take the data in real time, again, as it occurs. Uh, and this method is the AMQPQ and this is best for infrastructure clients doing real-time billing because it will, it's, uh, A, it's an approved method, it scales very well and the reason it does this is unlike the APIs, this is very low down on, the AMQP is very low in the system. So there's not much load going in there. There's also some other advantages about AMQP I'll cover in a second. Uh, the cons really are just that it's a little more work than an API. And uh, you, because it's your own infrastructure, you're responsible for the redundancy on it. So your billing can still fail if you don't set it up correctly. Uh, and that's where just working with us comes into play. So how does AMQP work? Uh, it's very much like a post office uh, and it has some nice features that make it great for delivering messages just like a post office. Uh, this is a little small, but the way it works is uh, messages are published from a WAP. Uh, so the WAP knows uh, that it wants to publish a message to AMQP after that and when it publishes it goes into an exchange. And that exchange is like your post office. Uh, it's where your mail sits until it's time to come pick it up. Uh, the way you pick it up is with a queue. Uh, the queue uh, routes, the exchanges route into the queues. You can uh, attach multiple queues to the same exchange. So you can get that same event many times into many processes. There's no limit there. Uh, you can also do uh, things like topic-based queues as well as uh, key-based queues. There's some ways of splitting it up so that you can get different information from the same stream based on uh, the definition of the queues. It's basically filtering. Uh, and then finally, the consumer consumes the message. So that's your bill. In this example, that's your billing system. So the way that it works is WAPs publish a message. You have a queue set up for, thing, for call hangups. And when that call hangup occurs, that message can be consumed by your application. Uh, so uh, another couple things about how AMQP works uh, that are relevant, uh, they have something called message attributes, which is just another fancy word for metadata. So when we do a call hangup, we include the CDR with the hangup message. Uh, so that's where you're getting your CDRs from. Uh, you also have message acknowledgments. It will not delete the message until you gets a confirmation that you have received it. So it's got that nice reliability that it's not going to drop the message off and just say, you know, like your UPS guy who puts a $400 Xbox on your doorstep in a bad neighborhood and is just like, oh, I'm out. You know, hope you get it. Uh, and then uh, one last thing, it just it uses TCP for reliable de delivery. So it's really a good system, again, uh, for just getting messages reliably. Uh, so the way you integrate into your billing flat platform, you're going to set up an exchange uh, for hang-up messages. Uh, then you would set up a queue to receive those, receive the payload, and then have your system parse the payload. Uh, I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. So I'm logged into Sandbox. This is uh, RabbitMQ, and this is our SAC servers, Sacramento servers. So, and this is just a system overview so you guys can see what RabbitMQ looks like. Uh, let me blow it up a little more. There we go. Uh, and you can see it's sandbox. Not much is going on right now because we're all here. Uh, you can see our connections. Uh, and then you get to uh, exchanges. That was the relevant part I talked about before. That's the post office. And here are all these exchanges that have been set up. And so uh, there's already an exchange here for call events. And you can see that it's attached to several things. Uh, several different queues. Uh, so those uh, so those hang-up messages go to a bunch of different places and basically again the WAP just refers to this exchange when it publishes that message and that's how it ends up in the exchange. Uh, so the thing we're going to do today is set up a test queue and the way it works is uh, we already have something called a CDR listener. Uh, I'm basically just going to replicate that. So 
So I'm going to add that queue. And now it should be searchable. And then once I have that queue, I can add a binding. Uh, so I'm going to say from the exchange call event. And then I always forget this. And then the event that we're looking for is call channel destroy. And we add a modifier to include all events that are like that. So we add that binding. And then if I've done it correctly, I should be able to go into my web phone on Sandbox, make a call to myself. Uh, Yeah, you can hear it buzzing up there now. So now that I've hung up, I can go and I should be able, there it goes. And I should be able to see that message that it came in on my queue. And I can also go actually in this system because I'm testing. Normally this would be your billing system getting the message. Uh, I can actually just get the message that it occurred and I can come grab this payload out really long. And then I'm going to drop it in this JSON cleaner upper tool. And what you have here uh, that's a little hard to show. But you have your CDR information there. So that's three ways to get call information out of the system. Uh, there is one more way to talk about that a lot of clients have been asking us about, and I want to address it today. It's the use case of webhooks. Uh, and people like the idea of webhooks because it's kind of the same way that it's similar to AMQP in that you know the messages fire as the event occurs. Uh, the reason we tell people not to use it, and it's easy to set up, it's really easy to set up a webhook in our system. We even have an app that we're kicking out the door for it. Um, the problem is that you lose all of the benefit that you get with AMQP. So you can lose those billing events. If your system hiccups, if your network goes down for a second, there's no confirmation mechanism with webhooks. So if a billing event gets lost, it's gone. Uh, the other thing, we don't support it. So if you try to do this and it doesn't work and you call us up, we'll just laugh at you. And then, uh, no, we'll help you, but this is not the way to do it. And it just, it doesn't scale. Webhooks is, uh, it causes more load on the system. And I actually want to show you guys something. Uh, if you go back and look at that, uh, look at the specific queue, uh, not the one that I made. But the actual CDR listener, uh, oh, sorry. If you go back and look at the call event exchange, that was the thing. You will actually see on here that webhooks gets CDR info from the exact same place that everything else does, which is the AMQP. So this is the one place, and Webhooks is just getting it from here, and then it's, you're losing all of the benefit of AMQP uh, verification that the message has been delivered. Uh, so just, to t just wanted to touch on that really quickly uh, to say don't do this. Uh, what is Webhooks good for? I don't want to, I'm not trying to call our webhooks bad. They're great for certain things. They're great for triggering on-demand experiences. They're great for integrating with your web services uh, and especially feeding events back into the system with things like Pivot. Uh, so you can actually do some nice real-time call control with webhooks. All this, uh, you know, there's a lot of good use cases for it, but billing is not one of them. Uh, so now we're, so I, now I've covered all four and we're on to a summary of methods. Uh, this is just kind of to help you guys understand, make sure you place yourself on here. If you're a hosted, you can use our reseller reporting or APIs. If you're on our infrastructure plan, you should really just be using AMQP. Uh, if that 
is something that's technically challenging for any of you, please just talk to us. We can help you get there. Um, summary of what I've talked about. Uh, hosted resellers, you should really only be billing by month. Uh, you don't need real-time billing. Uh, and if you really do, we'll probably put you on a private installation so that you can use AMQP. Um, don't use webhooks for billing. And then if you're an infrastructure client, make sure you use AMQP. Uh, that's it, pretty much. Uh, one thing I wanted to say on this slide, that's my email up there. As a product guy, uh, your opinions, I can turn your opinions into product, uh, which is pretty cool and a uh, fun sort of responsibility to have. So uh, what I got up on stage here today to say was our ears are open now about billing. We want to hear what you guys want to see in billing. And we're not going to ever be the huge billing solution that the billing companies provide. They do a good job of that. Uh, that's not our wheelhouse. But what we can do is we can make that entire process easier, uh, more seamless, more dependable, and just uh, basically make it so that you guys don't, you know, you set it up once, and then you just don't have to think about it a whole lot ever again because it's working great. And um, so please uh, use that email address and let me know, and use the community as well, and let me know what you'd like to see uh, more of in billing. Um, going back to Job, this was my slide from earlier. What's uh, some of the things we're going to talk about? Uh, there's things like functional limits and credits. As I said, James got into a bit of that, uh, but the thing he didn't get into, uh oh, huh, was uh, service docs and MODBs. Uh, so just to talk about that real quick, uh, a service doc looks like this. Got a sample one. So a service doc is in our system, and what it does is it allows you to set rates for items. It also allows you to count up those items. So you really have, you really have two concepts in here. Uh, bookkeepers, those are the counters. And you just tell the bookkeeper what to count for that plan type. And then you can set rates for items that are being counted. So it's pretty straightforward. Again, it's not billing. It just lets you assign a cost to things and count up how many of those things you used. Uh, you still have to create the invoice and that entire experience. Uh, MODBs are like this. I'm not going to go into them right now, uh, but they're for monthly limits. And, they're, and again, like, just like James Imanetti said, uh, they're good if you have something like a monthly credit amount that you want people to be able to go through. Um, but uh, that, those concepts, I will, uh, there's a training for the next couple days. If you're going to there, I will be around that training so we can talk more about those concepts if anybody's interested in learning more. I'll also be around for a little more time now if you have any questions about how to implement your billing or what you guys are looking to do. Uh, so again, just please communicate with me. And uh, finally, uh, as last speaker of the day, I think I get to say this, let's all go relax. Uh, and maybe he, maybe that's his job, but uh, that's, I'm just going to leave that up there now. <laughs> <laughs>